So now let us look at the actual flow of information in terms of our in terms of IPOS. Yes, let's look at the flow of information in terms of IPOS here. Now when we talk about the flow of information, or the, it can be called the stages in processing, what we're actually looking at is how information goes through the system, right? And we're looking at it in terms of IPOS, which is input processing, output, and storage, right? So we're looking at, looking at it in terms of those four keywords, right? So when we look at it in terms of that, the first thing we have to think about is input. Now, if you look at the diagram in front of you, you'll notice that input comes first, and then we have an arrow leading to processing, then we have an arrow leading to output, and we have an arrow from processing down to up and down to storage. Right? So let's explain how this works. So with in, with with the information processing cycle or the flow of pro, fl the flow of information or stages of processing, all of these words mean the same thing. <laughs> Now, with this, we're basically going to enter or put some information into our system. Then the computer is going to do some processing or generate some information, and then it's going to give us output. Now, like I said previously, storage doesn't necessarily mean you going to save something. It can mean the processor or the computer chip getting information from somewhere and giving it to you as output. So this is why the processor or the process is going to and from storage because it's not just you saving information it's also the processor or the computer getting information stored and then presented all right so that's basically our information processing cycle or stages of processing all right so now we're going to move forward and we're going to look at the processor a little bit more now, the processor is divided into two main parts or two main sections. The first and most important part is the control unit. Now, the control unit is going to control every aspect of you using your device or your, or your system. So, from you turning it on, you selecting an app, you writing something, the control unit or the CU is going to be in control of all of that. The next section we have is the arithmetic logic unit or the ALU. Now the ALU is going to perform arithmetic operations such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and logical, operation, logical operations. Now these, this section is used very sparingly. Well, not as sparingly as you would think because with arithmetic logic unit, it is used when we're looking at um, videos, pictures, or any graphical in graphics on our systems because it's used to represent these images on our screen. So whereas the control unit is always being used because it, it's there when whatever we're doing. The arithmetic, arithmetic logic unit doesn't necessarily have to be there depending on the program or the application that you're using. If the application is video intensive like maybe YouTube, or if it's graphical intensive, like maybe a video game, or you're looking at pictures on Instagram, then the ALU would be very prevalent, right? But the control unit is the section that deals with every aspect in terms of your system. Everything that happens, that's the, that's the section that deals with it.